in the human kidneys there is very limited time in which chloride urea and creatinine must be reabsorbed from the proximal tubule into the peritubular capillaries otherwise they will be thrown out of the body into urine so let's talk about how the chloride urea and creatinine try to get out of the proximal tubule of nephrons into the peritubular capillaries is we have uh, we are discussing the urine formation by kidneys and we have discussed so many times that in the urine formation process the first step is filtration in which blood is filtered in the glomerular capillaries the filtrate then enter into the proximal tubule and the second st um, step of the urine formation is tubular reabsorption in this step a lot of important uh, ions electrolytes are reabsorbed like glucose, sodium, chloride from the proximal tubule into the peritubular capillaries and the remaining waste material like urea and creatinine are excreted out of the body. But in order to avoid excretion, how they struggle to get out of this tubule into the peritubular capillaries. Now, in the previous lectures, we have discussed that some of the electrolytes uh, like uh, some of the electrolytes like sodium they are absorbed actively with the help of power. They have the power and some of the substances like glucose, they are dependent on the absorption of sodium similarly absorption of amino acids is also uh, dependent on absorption or reabsorption of sodium and we discussed here that how glucose and amino acids they share ride with the sodium to get entry into the cells of peritubular uh, sorry cells of the proximal tubule of the nephron these are cells of the proximal tubule of nephron they are basically these cells represents this area now coming to the point the absorption of chloride from proximal tubule of kidney proximal tubule of nephron into the peritubular capillaries can occur in three ways three ways first of all when the sodium when the sodium from the proximal tubule is actively absorbed, sodium from the proximal tubule is actively absorbed with the help of sodium potassium pump, sodium get entry into the cell. And we discussed previously that it also helps glucose and amino acids to get entry into the cell and into the peritubular capillaries and intercellular spaces. But sodium also helps chloride. It also helps chloride to get entry. How it helps the chloride to get entry from the proximal tubule into the peritubular capillaries or interstitial spaces. So the three ways are, first of all, there is positive charge on the sodium. When positive charge gets entry into the cells, this, the negative charge in the peritubular, uh, sorry, in the proximal tubule increases. So there is decrease in positive charge in the tubule. There is decrease in positive charge in the tubule and increase in the negative charge associated with chloride. So there is a gradient and this gradient is due to the difference in the charge and you can call it the electrical gradient. So to compensate this, the concentration gradient, uh, sorry, the electrical gradient favors the reabsorption of chloride from proximal tubule into the cells of the proximal tubule. Now this is one way. The electrical gradient is one way in which chloride gets entry from tubule into the cell. The second thing is the concentration difference. The sodium, uh, when the sodium gets reabsorbed into the cells, water also gets entry into the cells with the osmosis. The process through which water follow the sodium due to concentration difference. When the sodium concentration in the cells increases, the water concentration in the tubule increases and the concentration of sodium decreases due to which due to which water moves from area where the concentration of solute like sodium is low to region where the concentration of solute like sodium is high so water is basically following the sodium when water follows the sodium the concentration of chloride in the tubule increases now this thing creates a concentration uh, a concentration gradient initially due to the movement of the charge associated with the sodium an electrical gradient was uh, an electrical uh, gradient developed now due to the concentration difference due to the movement of water the concentration of chloride in the tubule concentration of chloride in the tubule increases so a concentration gradient also develops and concentration gradient also favors reabsorption of chloride from the tubule into the peritubular capillaries or the intercellular spaces now these are two methods the third method for reabsorption of chloride from the tubule into the cells is through active reabsorption with sodium sometimes when sodium is actively reabsorbed there are some carrier proteins in which Sodium will directly take away chloride with itself into the cells and intercellular spaces. So these are three ways in which chloride will get entry from tubule into the cells of the tubule and then uh, they, it, chloride will get entry into the intercellular spaces and into the blood. Now, urea, urea also get reabsorbed through urea transporters or urea receptors and concentration gradient. But the, the reabsorption of urea from the proximal tubule into the peritubular capillaries is very, very low. Now see, almost almost 23% of urea will be excreted in urine. Here you see the 180, 180 grams of glucose filtered per, per day is completely reabsorbed. 180 is completely reabsorbed and the amount of glucose excreted in urine is 0%. But the amount of urea that is reabsorbed from the tubule into the peritubular capillaries is low and are around 23% or only around 23% will get reabsorbed, the remaining will be excreted into urine. The remaining will be excreted in urine. No, sorry, this is not percentage. This is not percentage. This is the percentage, this is the amount. So out of 46, 23 is reabsorbed and 23 goes. So around 50% will be excreted in urine. Finally, if we talk about the reabsorption of creatinine, 1.8 1 gram of creatinine is filtered here 
per day 1.8 gram is filtered and out of 1.8 gram of creatinine that is filtered per day zero creatinine is reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries and almost 100% is excreted in urine so previously we were discussing that glucose makes friendship with the sodium and sodium being a rich uh, girl helps the glucose and helps the amino acids sodium also helps chloride but sodium refuses to help urea and creatinine and here comes the intelligence of the kidneys here is the intelligence how intelligently the, the the human kidneys are basically getting rid of the waste materials the kidneys are intelligent they know that sodium is necessary glucose is important chloride is important potassium is important but creatinine is not important so the second stage of urine formation that is tubular reabsorption plays a very important role to basically remove those substances from the body or to get rid of the those substances from the body which are not important or which are uh, less important and basically they are metabolic waste products so if glucose is important for the body so almost all glucose is reabsorbed and zero glucose is going into the urine normally similarly bicarb bicarbonate almost all the bicarbonate is reabsorbed almost all the sodium is reabsorbed but zero percent of creatinine is reabsorbed and almost all the creatinine is going into the urine and that's that is basically how the kidneys are maintaining the balance of substances and how the uh, the kidneys are basically helping in the homeostasis so this lecture was basically about the reabsorption of chloride urea and creatinine thanks a lot for watching the video